Hello, good morning and welcome to another episode of the Cryptid Ramblers podcast. As always, I'm your co-host Callum and thankfully, as always, is uh, my other co-host Scott. Hey, how are we doing? Very well, mate. Very well. How are you? Yeah, I'm great. Great. Good man. Real good at the moment. Good week? Uh, so far, so good. Yeah, it was, good. it's been all right. I've been um, left to my own devices. I've been the uh, the main mm. man on site. Oh, you've been Bosco, haven't you, I've for been, the week? Yeah. <laughs> I've been Bosco, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's come with its challenges, mostly other people. But, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, no, mate, all, all is well, all is well. Um, picked up me, myself a little 3D printer, so I've been... Yes, Ge- you geeking have. Geeking yeah. away on that, man. <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool, though. That's good. How about yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, sort of same shit, different week, for really, for the most part. Um, yeah, work's been fine. Back up in the uh, the city, um, which is probably the, the downside, I would say. Um, <laughs> yeah. being, a, being a hermit, having to mix with people and... Work with people isn't the most ideal thing in the world, but <laughs> no, it's a, not when you're a troglodyte. No, exactly. But uh, yeah, such is life, and we do what we have to. So yeah, that's probably the worst thing to happen yeah, <laughs> in the week. Right. So having to travel for my job, so yeah. it's uh, first world problems. Could be worse. Exactly right. First world problems. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, not too bad otherwise. Man, cheers. Cool. Yeah. Um, right. Before we get going, um, of course, we have our usual shout outs that we we'll, uh, you know we like to get through. Firstly, our beloved patrons, uh, James and Justin. Beloved. I beloved, love that. <laughs> of course, always. <laughs> uh, thank you, as always, uh, chaps, for the uh, continued support. Um, it is much appreciated, as we always say. And uh, and again, just um, yeah, special thanks to James again for the, his question, which uh, yeah. created our last episode, which um, I know a lot of you have, have listened to. Um, had some great numbers on it. So hopefully, James, we've done it uh, justice and... Uh, you enjoyed it as much as uh, as we did, mm. and you know the listens are uh, quite quickly sort of creeping up. So um, yeah, I think it's yeah, resonating right. with other people as well. So yeah, yeah, it's gone down well. So thank you again uh, for that. And um, yeah, remember, guys, you two can be a part of this uh, illustrious uh, supporters club, if you will, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you can do so by heading to uh, patreon dot com forward slash cryptid ramblers podcast. Um, now, as uh, as always, we have got two reasonably priced tiers <laughs> for um, for you to choose from, um, priced at uh, four and six pounds respectively, plus VAT. Plus VAT. And uh, yeah, depending on which one you go for, you'll get um, early access to each biweekly um, episode, a personal shout out, as you've just heard. Um, and if you're part of the uh, the top tier, then you'll see uh, the video recording um, of every podcast. So don't get to just hear our voices but you'll get to see our mugs as well see these so beautiful uh, mugs. yeah if that's not reason enough then uh i don't know what is no. we might as well just pack up and <laughs> give up i think they'd rather it <laughs> they'll probably rather it yeah <laughs> no doubt um of course we can't um you know can't finish there on the the shout outs we have to uh mention the home of the cryptid ramblers podcast um the place where the uh, the magic happens the new purpose built podcast studio here at Hellfire Studios. Um, it's based in Southend, which is roughly 45 minutes from London, and it is the first podcast, film, and photography studio here in Essex. Hellfire Studio offers full content creation, so visit hellfirecreative.com for more info on that. Now, as always, for just being a, a listener of, uh, of us, you, you too can benefit from our sponsorship by receiving a 20% discount um, on any of those uh, services. So just go to hellfirestudio.uk and use the code cryptid at the checkout. And um, it is as easy as that. It really is. <laughs> you can make it any easier. No. <laughs> and you get a discount for your troubles. So, um, again, if there's no other reason, then I don't know what, I, <laughs> what is. <laughs> We're making this as easy as possible you, for you You're purely guys. going down the logical just, route this yeah, morning, aren't yeah, you? That's it, as always. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back in that mindset. We've got the structured episode back. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's how I'm you're attacking it now, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. I feel at home now. Yeah. Got a bit of structure. <laughs> that's it, yeah. Whoever said you never lived outside the box was clearly lying. I know, right? <laughs> Changing minds all over the shop, know, mate. Right? That's what we do here. That's what we do. <laughs> um, now, no, yeah, no longer uh, an update, actually. Um, it's more out of an announcement. Um mm. 
we have now launched our brand new merch store, yes. um, which we're super excited about. Um, so for anyone who's sort of not been sort of following, um, we have teamed up with uh, a local company, um, Buy That Merch, um, who are also the guys behind um, SOS Clothing, mm-hmm. um, who I'm sure you've seen on the social medias, um, to basically, yeah, we're working with them to basically bring our new range. Um, to launch it, uh, we've basically dropped um, a lot of new designs, um, mostly based on the first season of the podcast. Um, so particular episodes or uh, particular phrases in particular yeah. <laughs> that we've, uh, yeah, that we've certainly chuckled over. Um, we've got a raging gorgon in there. <laughs> that we have, <laughs> and we've got a t-shirt, <laughs> and we've got a t-shirt. <laughs> and not only that, we've also got a shaved monkey. That yeah, we do. Yeah, which is uh, yeah, a particular favourite of uh, of mine. So I'll be. Uh, I'll be making a purchase, that's for sure. <laughs> You'll be getting yourself a shaved monkey then, yeah? Oh, absolutely. And a T-shirt. <laughs> and a T-shirt. <laughs> um, we've, uh, yeah, so they're just a couple of the um, the new designs that we've um, decided to sort of bring to you guys. Hopefully, um, you know, you'll like them as much as we do and uh, enjoy them as much as we have. Yeah, <laughs> um, but we, we've, we've kept one original um, design, which is the one that Scott beautifully uh, models um, every other week, which is basically just our main um, logo, um, as you're showing now, <laughs> zip for the Patreon's benefit. The Patreon. <laughs> um, so yes, there's one original logo for now that we've um, that we've sort of kept, but otherwise everything else is um, is completely new. So yeah, please head over to um, buythatmerch.co.uk. Go to um, podcast artists on the uh, the top of the uh, the toolbar, and of course select Cryptid Ramblers podcast. Um, failing that, you can simply type in buy that merch.co.uk forward slash cryptid ramblers and it will take you straight to um, our store um as i say we're both super stoked to be working with these guys um, and i can personally vouch for the quality um as as can scott because yep. we, we, we actually met the guys here at the studio didn't we, yeah, we did. um, and saw s- some of the uh the merch that they were sampling um that they're actually here doing a shoot um in, on the floor below us right, whilst yeah. we were recording uh, which is how this whole thing kind of got started really um, and I've also recently actually bought a, um, a t-shirt that they do for the, uh, oh. the NAC guys. Oh, nice. Yeah. I got the, um, Kentucky goblins. Oh, you did? Yeah. I got that one. Excellent. Um, so I can, yeah, I can literally vouch for, you know, sort of the quality through other stuff that we've purchased from them. So, cool. um, yeah, so please check it out guys. And if nothing else, just let us know what you think feedback on the designs, you know, any designs that you actually may want to see that we haven't done. Um, and yeah, just any general sort of ideas and, and comments yeah. um, as always are welcome um, <clears throat> so on that note unless uh, you've got anything no Scott, I ain't got anything can, to say uh, mate I, I really want to get into yeah, this we I can jump in yeah <laughs> yeah. because yeah. I've, I've purposefully steered clear of like the definition of, of the dog man yeah um, and, and such and because I haven't yeah you haven't because <laughs> I knew you wouldn't <laughs> so yeah I always was always under the impression that the dog man and the werewolf mm. was pretty much the same sort of cryptid, but yeah. just a regional version. So like over mm. here in Europe, we would have the the werewolf mm. um, or wolf man. And over in, in the North American continent, yeah. you'd have the dog man. I always yeah. thought that that was the dichotomy. But uh, that's, that's true. I guess that's true to an extent, but there are, um, although, I mean, there is one, you know, sort of main difference, which does, you know, separate the two. Because I know, um, you know, we spoke, you know, before, um, you know, obviously in our little meeting that we do every every week before, but just in general, and, you know, it was going to be sort of, you know, dog man slash, you know, werewolf, but mm. we actually found, or I actually found that there was, um, you know, there was one quite significant difference between the two, um, you know, and as, as we both know, there is such a law and a legend to werewolves that that mm. could probably be its own and will be its own, you know, sort of episode. So we thought we'd you know, dedicated to just the dog man. So yeah, so you'd be right in, in essence to kind of have that, you know, initial thought. And to be honest, I, I, I had, you know, the same, mm. but yeah, there's a few articles and, and things that I read that, um, yeah, that does kind of pull the two apart really is actually being cryptids in their own right. Um, and not really in any way linked, um, aside from possible, uh, appearance, um, criteria, mm. um, and, and that kind of thing. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess without further ado, we'll uh, 
We'll jump into it. Let's um, go. So beating around the bush, let's just <laughs> let's just get to it. <laughs> so I'm dropping these little breadcrumbs, but not really saying anything. <laughs> no, no, <right>. Teasing. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the dog man or Michigan dog man um, was first sighted um, in 1887 um, in Wexford County. Um, it is originally described as uh, being seven foot tall, uh, blue eyed, uh, bipedal canine with the torso of a man, um, and obviously the, the head of a, a dog. Mm. Um, it is also believed to have a horrifying howl, which can sometimes sound like a human scream. Um, so I think just like early interpretation of that kind of scream, like a sort of Wendigo, uh, sort of mimicking yeah. the sound of, sort of, know, like sort of with, a human. Um, we've got like the urban fox. You hear them yeah. screaming. They sound, sound like a baby crying or yeah. someone screaming. Yeah, yeah, much like that. I'd say. Yeah. Um, now, according to um, local legend, so within uh, Michigan, um, the dog man appears in ten-year cycles, where the year ends in a seven. Apparently, Ooh. that's the yeah. A bit, like the, the bit like the creeper and you know it. They you know they only sort of turn up in you know. Yeah, certain cycles, you know, seven, ten, thirty years, oh, whatever Jeepers it might creepers, be. You mean the creeper? The creeper, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I mean, that's I've only found that assigned to local legend, and it seems like it was Michigan that kind of first kind of bred certainly the dog man. Um, yeah, I mean, there are other, you know, sort of iterations, of course, which will, um, you know, which will go through. But yeah, I thought that was quite an interesting point that they that they believe mm. locally that it goes in a ten year cycle. And it started from when the year ended in a seven and then That's yeah, every 10 years from there on. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I quite liked that bit. It adds a bit of a that does Hollywood up, doesn't kind it? of theme to it, which I that quite like. That does marry but up. It does, yeah. Because you've got a story coming up later on. In sevens, yeah. 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 That does Ooh, kind that's of, weird. Yeah. And not just in, um, you know, Michigan either. So, yeah, there could be some, I mean, is it is it coincidence? I don't know. I guess we'll. I guess we'll come on to that. Yeah, we'll come on to <laughs> we'll, that a when we get off the fence. Later. Yeah, <laughs> jumping the gun a little bit there, but yeah. Uh, yeah so as I say, the first sighting um, was from 1887, uh, and it came from the account of two lumberjacks um, who saw a creature who had the body of a man and the head of a dog. Um, now, again, jumping the gun a little bit, um, but it wasn't until the late 1980s that dogman sightings were actually properly documented and you know, sort of written down. Mm. Um, so there isn't really much to that kind of first sighting because at the time, like I say, from then up to the, the 1980s, it wasn't really taken seriously. It was just a, you know, Halloween story or a, you know. A campfire just a, story. Yeah, exactly that type of thing. Local legend that people just enjoyed, you know, telling the, you know, the story. It was only, it, it took sort of, you know, prominence, I guess, you know, in later years when it then started to either be, more documented or um, possibly taken more seriously. Mm. Um, so it was literally two lumberjacks were part of a, a, a whole crew um, in uh, Wexford County, Michigan. And yeah, within the, the, the sort of the, the forest where they were, um, yeah, they saw this sort of creature standing on two, two legs walking amongst the, you know, sort of the woodland. Um, and that's all they described it as was the, the, uh, the body of a man and the head of a dog. And that was it. And because it wasn't taken all that seriously, that I couldn't really see anything where they'd actually given a full, um, you know, a full sort of account. Gotcha. But, um, but that's the that's the first known um, sighting. Again, from what from what I could find. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> in nineteen thirty eight, in Paris, Michigan, um, Robert Fortry um, was attacked by five wild dogs. He said that one of them walked on two legs. Um, and that, that seems to be the next one that kind of followed that. And then over the next 20 years or so, um, other sightings were made across uh, Michigan um, in a uh, Alagorn County, Cross Village and Manistee over sort of 20 years. And it seemed to be localised to those um, three sort of towns or, or counties. Gotcha. Um, and again, not particularly well documented, again, because I think it just wasn't at the time taken all that mm. seriously because, you know, I think back then if someone said, oh, you know, I was out in the woods and I saw oh, the dog standing on two legs with the torso of a man, you'd be like, 
Get off the sauce. Yeah, what, what yeah. moonshine yeah. you've been drinking? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a home brew again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you, you can kind of, um, yeah, you can understand it to, uh, yeah, sort of to an extent. Um, then we, we, we jump ahead a bit to uh, 1961, um, where a night watchman um, was patrolling a manufacturing plant in Big Rapids, Michigan, um, when he saw, you know, this same elusive creature. He thought it was actually a man. Um, until he saw um, the dog-like features. So so what happened was this guy, like I say, he was a, a, a night watchman. Um, he was walking around the plant. <clears throat> he was up on a, a, a sort of a high-rise part of the, the plant, sort mm. of with Salch, you know, sort of looking in all the sort of the crevices, doorways, and out on the, uh, I guess what you'd call like the sort of the forecourt of the, the plant. And it was during that kind of search that he saw something sort of standing just on the edge of a, a tree line between sort of him and the plant. <clears throat> and yeah, at first he just thought it was a guy. So he's, you know, he's shining the torch, moving, you know, from sort of side to side yeah, to try and see if he angle. can, yeah, get a better angle of it. Um, uh, but yeah, it was only when he then saw the dog-like features of of the, you know, of what was standing, you know, sort of in front of him, he pulled his gun um, ready to, you know, shoot it. Which of course, you know, He's welcome to America. Yeah. <laughs> shoot first, ask later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't understand it, I'll shoot it and then worry about it. Yeah, know, right. <laughs> so he pulled his gun, um, yeah, ready to shoot, um, and then realised that actually he wanted to capture it so people would, you know, believe him. And by capture it, I mean on uh, camera, oh, okay. on, on video. Rather than trapping it. Not actually trapping it, yeah. Okay, gotcha. So he then presumably puts the, his gun down or you know, back in a holster and he grabs his camera to snap a shot of it, um, which th there is actually online. There is actually a picture of what he managed to, um, oh, excellent. of what he um, saw. Um, that's one of those where it's, y you have to zoom in to actually see what he was, you know, looking at. Cause obviously the photo was taken at, you know, at some distance. Mm. Um, and yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, you can see it's, it's obviously a very dark photo. Yeah. It's a dark background and you do see a sort of sl slightly sort of, I guess, enlarged blackened sort Mass. of head uh, with, you know, sort of in shoulders. Um, and yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it was what, 1961. So at that time, you know, horror films and that was so, you know, could you have sort of manipulated a photo to, you know, create it? I, I don't know. Not, maybe not to that quality. You know, would you go to the effort of, putting on a suit and getting a mate to stand out there again of that quality I'm, I'm not too I'm not too sure it'd have to be sort of movie level yeah you know sort of costume I guess to you know like American werewolf in London gotcha, type yeah. prosthetics to to kind of pull it off I don't know we'll share it on the um yeah socials please do, once I'd like we've, to see um, that as well once we've dropped it um mm. so you can have a look and you can you know make up your own uh your own minds I know we're asking you to look at the picture of a but supposed <laughs> you know dog man but uh i don't it, it was it was compelling i think when you take into you take all the factors into account um you know it, it's it, i don't know it'd be hard to disprove but at the same time you look at it and you think oh you know i'm not too sure so yeah people can sort of make up their own uh make up their own minds um as i say from this point there were many more sightings of um you know the dog man but as, as i alluded to earlier they weren't properly recorded until about 1987. Um, now, this was when a DJ from Michigan recorded a song about the previous Dogman sightings um, and released it on April Fool's Day. Um, the DJ was uh, Steve Cook from Traverse City, Michigan. Um, the song was called The Legend, um, and following the release of the song on April Fool's, the radio station uh, WTCM-FM was then just inundated with um, with similar sightings. So people, I don't think, caught on to the fact that it was an April Fool's and it was sort of tongue-in-cheek. It was like a... I, don't, I, I listened to it, it, it's bad, but it was like Has a been... sort of... Um, like a... I guess what I would call a, a sort of country and western style yeah. sort of folk song. But what he's doing is he's basically reciting all of the previous Dogman sightings. Gotcha. So okay. in, in a song format, but yeah. he's basically just yeah relaying these um, 
Kind yeah, of it's t- all sightings. Tenacious D's tribute. Yeah, kind of. If you if you yeah, if you imagine that it's like less epic. If Tenacious D did a Ice Nine Kills song. <laughs> okay. If you imagine that in a folky kind of context, it, yeah. it was kind of like that. Again, there's a, a YouTube, so we can um, we can share that yeah, as well on the uh, what you mean there, actually. on the on the socials. But yeah, I don't think people got the joke or got the the sort of the the fact that it was April Fools. <coughs> and so people were writing in saying like, "Oh my god, like, I've had a similar experience. I've seen the same thing," and blah blah blah. And then it just kind of imploded, and and that's why I was saying um, like earlier any account that I could find prior to 1987 was very thin on, you know, kind of information, you know, sort of credibility, other people coming forward and being like, oh, yeah, no, I, I saw that in the same area. Or, you know, it seems to be very isolated to the people that have these sightings or, you know, experiences. Certainly from, you know, from what I could find. Um, obviously, again, if anyone, you know, Finds anything to the contrary, then uh, yeah, yeah. Please get in touch and uh, and share because this is um, yeah, it's been a real fascinating subject. So I'd like I'd like to get my teeth into it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> 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 yeah, more likely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I need that as a sound bite. I think. <laughs> um, and so yeah, so yeah, so I think it's from that point that that people then sort of, I don't know if it was like a confidence thing or they felt that it was taken more seriously because it was on like a, a, a from what I understand, a, a major kind of local radio station. But people were like, yeah, I've had that sighting, I've seen this. Blah, blah. And people then just started coming forward, um, which is, I think, why we now know about it. I think if it mm. stayed quite localised, it'd be one of those, I don't think you'd really sort of hear too much about. Um, but yeah, just... Um, Feeding off from what you said uh, at the start about, you know, a dogman and a werewolf being, you know, sort of one of the same. Um, like I said, that would be a fair assumption. And I think it's one you know, that I certainly had and, that, you know, everyone else would. But the one main difference um, that I could find, um, certainly from, you know, the descriptions and stuff, is that a dogman um, is forever in the form of a dog. Man. A bipedal dog. <laughs> man <laughs> no it's just forever in that form so it'll never change from one to the other or yeah. it's just always in that form um it's just like a creature by itself yeah as that as that yeah takes that form for you know forever and always sort of thing whereas a werewolf as we know will change from man to dog mm. and back again and that there you know there are certain conditions or circumstances where that change will occur you know full moon and you know course, all, yeah. that, all that stuff yeah whereas uh yeah dog man is, is forever in that form um so yes yeah, so that's the that's the main difference which is why i think it it kind of sets them apart because then from with that difference comes a different legend and a different you know sort of you know folklore oh, yeah. and stuff so you can't even draw comparisons to that bit the only thing as we were discussing before we recorded the only similarities really are the descriptions of the creature when they're both in that form yeah that's probably the only Kind well, of similarity based on what you've just said there, there's a much uh, longer history with regards to werewolves over dogmen. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. A huge, huge amount oh, of history, massive, yeah, hundreds um, of years, uh, yeah, yeah, thousands potentially, mm, be- potentially. Because um, I know that it does go back to old Greek stories, mm. classical Greek stories of, yeah. of, of its origins. So, yeah, but definitely. obviously, that's for an ep- yeah, for we episode, ju- we'll, so. we'll actually we'll jump into that separately, yeah. Mm. Um, now again, we we joked about it not too long ago, um, but there, as you can imagine, <laughs> there isn't a real sort of etymology um, on this one with regards to where the name come from or what, or whether it could mean <laughs> anything else, because it is quite self-explanatory. It is quite literally a dog man, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that the head and fur of a dog with the form or body of a of a man, um, even to the point of it stands on, you know, sort of two legs um, for the for the most part. So yeah. <laughs> there's no real there's no real clever um you know there was no sort of uh think tank on that one no definitely not <laughs> it was it does what it says on the tin <laughs> yeah that will do that will do yeah exactly yeah um yeah so yeah sadly that's only the the only etymology you really have to find on there on on that one <laughs> that's fair enough really um now, thank, not, you, thank you for looking I, anyway. I wanted to clarify that for anyone just in case there was any <laughs> confusion <laughs> It's, it's forever an educational <laughs> podcast, this one. Oh, so, um, oh, yeah, yeah, it's just a duty I take on myself because, you know, 
you have to bring it to the people. Don't Some, we? Someone's got. <laughs> someone's got to do it. You know. So why not me? <laughs> well, rather you than me, buddy. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, now it's linked to um, a very similar cryptid, aside from um, a werewolf, um, from Wisconsin, um, known as the Beast of Bray Road, which um, has been taken, um, it's been put under the spotlight quite recently, uh, quite a bit from what I've seen on mm. some on the a lot of the cryptid pages that that you and I are both a part of on sort of Facebook, for example. With you know, kind of either people re- retelling their story or new stories are, are sort of coming to light. Um, now the description is almost identical um, to a uh, dogman in that it's uh, between six and seven feet tall, humanoid body, you know, covered in fur, with the head of a wolf. Um, it can move as either a you know bipedal uh, bipedal quadruped, and is also linked to, but it's more linked to the traditional werewolf. Yeah. So that's why that's why I've not um I, I didn't dive into that one because I think that would probably be a story that we could I mean again with the number of sightings and stuff, that's maybe even something we could um we could do as a separate episode. Oh, yeah, definitely. Or include it in the werewolf one because it seems to be more linked in similarities to a werewolf as opposed to what we're talking about here with, you know, dogmen in particular. So that's why I've, I've kind of um, sort of left it. Um, but what I did find out um, was that the first known sighting of this beast comes a bit later than dogman uh, in 1936. Wow. So again, that's something to, you know, sort of jump into. But, you know, Wisconsin, again, my geography is quite awful, but I'm pretty sure Wisconsin is nowhere near Michigan. Yeah, there's a big distance. It's quite a the distance, yeah. I wouldn't say like other end of the country, but Wisconsin I is like so. up near Canada, isn't it? Yeah, it's on like the north. north. Michigan is is a northern state as well. Oh, is it? Oh, it might yeah. be closer than I thought. Like I say, my my geography is awful at the best of times. Never in England. Never mind anywhere else. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that'll either be one um, you know that we'll bring as a separate um, episode. It might even be the next one. Might be, or we'll include it as a little snapshot in um, you know the werewolf one that we'll inevitably do. Um, are you googling? I am. I'm googling, <laughs> googling the distance. Oh, no, no, they border. They border. They, they border. Yeah. God, that's bad. Isn't so it? I thought well, they were nowhere near each other. <laughs> oh, Dean, I told you my Dean from crap. NAC is in Michigan. He's um, in Michigan. Yeah. And uh, just to the west, over Lake Michigan, um, is Wisconsin. Oh wow. Yeah. So okay. They, well, at least we've confirmed that my geography is crap. <laughs> if nothing else, <laughs> both of us. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Oh well. Right. So terrible, that, that was makes... I actually lived over it, uh, over in Florida for a bit. Yeah. You know, so should know something about it. Well, that would make sense then as to why Wisconsin have their own, you know, sort of version. Mm. Um, so yeah, we, we make close geographically. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so we may well, uh, yeah, cover it in a in its own episode if we can find enough on it, or we'll just do it as a as a uh, little segue in the uh, the werewolf um, episode because it carries more similarities with that, which is why I've not sort of jumped mm. into it. Um, but I've got uh, I've got a, a couple of uh, other sightings um, that I wanted to go to go through, um, which I know you're gonna enjoy. Well, I think you can enjoy all of them, but two yeah. in particular. Oh, okay. um, I think it, these are a sort of um, physical <laughs> encounters or, or sightings, um, which is kind of you know, what we're talking about at the moment. Was I know you, mm. you're going down a potentially different path with what? Well, yeah, I found with what you've found. I so. found even more strangeness to the higher strangeness. Yeah, um, higher strangeness. <laughs> yeah, higher strangeness. <laughs> um, so I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll jump into these um, into these first. Yeah, go for um, it. Now, this one um, takes us back to uh, our beloved mountain mama, West Virginia. West Virginia, baby! <laughs> We're back. Let's go! <laughs> we are back. Um, Excellent. Now, this, um, I mean, take take it how you, how you will. It, it's from an undisclosed location um, from 1977, um, but we know that it's West Virginia. I don't know the what county, what town, or or anything. Um, Again, if anyone recognises this and has been able to find out where, then, again, please uh, please share. Um, But, yeah, it's presumably taking place on on farmland um, in 1977, as I say, on an undisclosed location. 
um, a boy went to visit his grandparents um, and he instantly noticed his uh, grandfather was quite agitated. Um, after a while, he asks the boy whether he has noticed any strange animals nearby. Um, of course he hadn't, so the, the grandfather tells him to you know, be alert as he thinks that there might be um, a predator out on, on the loose. So later that same evening, uh, the boy notices that his grandfather has fallen asleep um, by the living room window um, in a chair holding uh, his gun. Um, he leaves the room um, to get a glass of water, I think, um, comes back and thinks that he hears a, a, a howling noise. Upon seeing the living room window is open, he approaches it and sees that it's open you know, sort of by about two or three um, inches. I think it's one of those old style American ranches, you know, where you've got mm. the two catches in the middle and then you can slide it up or down. Yeah, of course. I think yeah. it's one of them style windows and it's, like I say, it's about two or three inches off the off the bottom, off the, you know, sort of the, the windowsill. Um, he looks out, you know, he sees nothing um, and so goes to another room um, to get some candy, apparently. Um, once he's done this, he, he walks back in to check on his uh, grandfather to see a paw um, coming through the gap in the window. Um, basically three um, three fingers um, of basically like a, what you said was a clawed hand um, crept through, um, seemingly trying to push the window open like more. Whoa. Um, the lad um, screamed. <laughs> then the creature made a similar noise. And then the <laughs> grandfather woke up. <laughs> I can imagine he was from like a scary movie where he, <laughs> the character screams <laughs> and then he, he makes the dog jump. And then he's like, oh, oh, fuck. <laughs> and then the granddad wakes up. And then they're all like, in this triangle, like just all like shaking and screaming. And you know, I'm, I'm glad you had that same. Yeah. Because, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you hear the dog outside going, oh, fuck. <laughs> um, Yes, <laughs> yes. So the grandfather woke up from the. These are uh, supposed to be really, really creepy stories, and we're yeah. pissing ourselves. And we, yeah, with it. sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so by the time the the, the grandfather had, um, you know, sort of picked up his gun to shoot at it, um, the creature had, had run away from uh, the window. Uh, <laughs> it sounded annoyed as it ran off. I don't know how a dog <laughs> sounds annoyed. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, doing a Harry from Home Alone, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, it, was it Muttley from? Uh, is it Muttley from? Uh, a wacky races. That's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 so you <imagine> <laughs> the dog the man's doing that off into the uh, fucking kid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a serious story. Sorry. Um, well, it's meant to be anyway. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. the the grandmother then um, comes into the room, turning on the outside light. Um, this then, um, this then uh, spooks the, the, you know, the, the creature, um, also the, the boy by his, you know, reaction. Um, and by turning the light on, the grandmother also saw the, the creature as it's, as it's continuing to, you know, run from their house. And, and all she says is she immediately shouts, it's back. Ooh. <laughs> Which is proper horror film that's, that's sits, ominous with the, the old lady just walks in and like turns on the light it's back it's back <laughs> yeah I'm like nope um, the, with, that, with that very homely West Virginia accent as well yeah exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, like, it's back nope I'm gone <laughs> bye bye um, the, the grandparents then um, instantly told the grandson about an encounter that the grandfather had had with the same creature as they believed um, about three years prior and that it hadn't returned until about two weeks prior this in, uh, prior to this incident when the, the grandson uh, visited. Um, but three years ago, the grandfather was out hunting and he was in a hide up in some trees. He was hunting deer um, and he noticed that the creature had started climbing the tree trying to reach him. Um, the, 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 the creature basically gets to below the, the, sort of the deer box um, so imagine it's basically just a tree house. So it's got a, a, a hatch a in the bottom so mm -hmm. you can obviously get up and down the, the tree. The creature gets to underneath that um, and basically he's trying to pull the hatch 
open. Um, so what the and he's, he's he's putting its nose through gaps in the wood, um, as it's you know sort of trying to you yeah, know bite yeah. at it and break you know break its way through. Um, so the grandfather grabs a hunting knife and stabs it in the nose, and in retaliation, the, the creature scratches at the the grandfather, um, catching his leg. He eventually gives up. Um, once it realizes, it's, you know, it's not getting through, um, and yeah, climbs back down the tree and runs away off into into the the woods. Um, now, the only thing that kind of you know corroborates the story for the, for the grandfather in, in terms of this account is that he still had the scar on his leg. Now, obviously, that cut could have come from anything, and he's just mm-hmm. fabricated a story. I get that, but the the grandson could see the the scar on his leg from where he'd supposedly been, you know, slashed by, you know, sort of the, the creature. Wow. Um, and he saw the creature because he saw it trying to come through the window and then running off through the land. So, he, yeah, so this unnamed person, you know, sort of believes that this is what his um, his grandparents uh, wow. experienced. Um, which, d- despite the laughing, <laughs> that was, that was actually, yeah. you know, a cool, um, you know, a, a cool... Uh, sort of first hand encounter. Like yeah. I say, and this had a you know, this had a lot more um you know information. And as I say, it it, it comes after um nineteen eighty seven mm-hmm. when um I mean, on that ten year cycle. Yeah, it's on that ten year cycle. So you got, you know, this in seventy seven and then that in eighty seven. Uh and then the next one um is twenty seventeen. So again, Ooh. ends in a seven, and it's Very a recent. lot more recent. Yeah. So yeah, as I said, so um, on the twenty seventh of August, twenty seventeen, in a small count, small town called La Follette in Wayne County, West Virginia, um, a young guy also had uh, an encounter. Um, driving back home after a very long drive, uh, he he passes a particular part of the route, which is an abandoned white church on what is a very sort of tight bend. So. Imagine like country lane styley. Mm. It's just an abandoned church at the end with a sharp bend, uh, sort of round to the the, the left. Um, the guy slows his car down um, to to take the corner as it is basically a blind curve. Um, plus, you have a steep ledge on one side, and on the other, a still uh, steep hillside. Gotcha. So if you take it too too fast you've had it either way either wreck your car or you fall off a cliff God. <laughs> so well <laughs> choose your poison <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. um as he takes the um the corner something walks out in front of him in the middle of the road he immediately thinks that it's a male black bear around 500 pounds um as the creature in front of him is of a similar size um but then he spots um the tail pointy ears canine canine like snout and a wolf type body um the moment um it stepped into the road it turned its head and stared at the guy in the car um now to his he was instantly thinking wolves shouldn't be in this area so you know why is there one here right now that was the first thing that kind of Mm. occurred to him that you know sort of confused him um aside from its size it was um it was sort of abnormally large um it was also um it had glowing red eyes and that's what kind of spooked him and he said it carried a different look to a normal dog so he'd instantly kind of cancelled out the idea of it being a bear based on obviously all, all these attributes gotcha. that he'd spotted um so he he was coming up with plenty of theories as he was sitting there as probably you and I would mm. you know is it is it something government created has it has it come from a conservation area is it escaped from a sanctuary of, you know, of some sort? But nothing really added up because, you know, there was nothing of that sort anywhere near where, you know, where he was. So he's he's saying that it looked like an overly large wolf. Yeah, basically a giant, you know, imagine like a 500-pound wolf. Jesus. Imagine like a big black bear. A dire wolf. Yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah, a dire wolf, I guess. Yeah, that's what he's looking at. And that's what he's trying to decipher. Like, what the hell is this thing? And, you know, and kind of where is it? know come from but it's in the middle of this you know small road so we can't get around it i suppose the only other option would be to reverse you know back up the the lane but he's on a blind corner so 
that thanks. wouldn't be a particularly great idea either. Um, so, yeah, so after, um, so yes, yeah, so nothing added up. After um, a while of basically just staring at each other, um, the creature put a hand on the car bonnet. Hand. You notice I didn't say paw, I said hand. <laughs> it puts a hand on the guy's uh, bonnet, lifts itself up and stands on its two hind legs. Um, he could hear bones cracking as it did this. Um, and it was at this point that he really got a good look at w- what it was. Um, he said it was between seven to eight feet tall, 600 to 650 pounds, and was covered in jet black hair. Uh, he could see that it also had a human-like torso from the waist up. Um, the wolf man, as he called it, then walked around to his side of the car and tried to jiggle the door handle, but luckily he had already locked it. Fuck right. As like long before he set off, oh, long before he got there. Um, however, it was clever enough to know that he had another door on the other side of the car, so it made its way around the front of the car up to basically the the passenger side, and had to go at that handle. But again, luckily that one was <laughs> the car was locked, so it couldn't um, get in. The 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 wolf man or the dog man snarls at him, walks back to the front of the car, um, before basically crossing over to the other side of the road. It took one more look at him, um, and as he stared back, he noticed over the creature's shoulder various pairs of glowing red eyes. Um, so there's more of them. So there was more of them. So it was a that, that was the pack leader basically sussing out whether this guy was probably going to be of any danger and whether he had to sort of dispose of him. Wow. Um, so, yeah, so this, um, yeah, so it wasn't alone, this thing, and he, he he surmised that it was probably the alpha of, you know, this said pack of, mm-hmm. you know, dogs, dog, you know, dog men. Um, and so, yeah, the, the guy basically threw his car into gear and, um, and sped home. Got the hell out of there. <laughs> I was like, nope. <laughs> I'm getting the hell out of here. Yeah. Um, so that, that one I, I, you know, sort of quite um, quite liked. Again, it was un... So you, they didn't give their name, but at least we've got a, you know, location. Location, yeah. Hopefully I said it right. Lavalette. Lavalette in County. Yeah, yeah. We, we checked it out, yeah. Mm. We checked um, out the, the, the location. Now, like... Um, like with the uh, the Michigan um, dog man, there are also sightings in Minnesota, so as you can imagine, the Minnesota dog man. Of course. <laughs> Again, no very, etymology needed for that one. Very derivative. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, this, uh, this one uh, specifically takes place in Ottertow County, uh, Minnesota. Uh, this occurred in 2009. <laughs> Um, when a guy was, again, driving down um, a sort of a country lane um, style road. Uh, it was about two miles from his house um, at this point, and he sees three white deer down the trail, uh, one doe and two yearlings um, who seem to be, and they, they all seem to be following a, a creek bed. He's a, I think he said he was a biologist, uh, a keen photographer, hunter, or whatever, so... Um, he he stopped the car to to look at them um and noticed that behind the only tree along this uh, trail about 400 yards from his car a creature was crouching behind it um and he he believed it was stalking the three um the three deer um paying no attention to him in his car um what sort of struck him as the most shocking um was the fact that the creature again had hands mm. so it wasn't paws it was hands um one of which it was using to brace itself against the tree so if you imagine you're sort of crouching or squatting by a tree you're going to put a you're going to put a hand out yeah to sort of brace yourself to sort of keep your your, your balance um now he he said it also had opposable thumbs um the creature seemed to be bipedal uh, as opposed to you know sort of crouching on on all fours um standing up he reckons it would have been about seven feet tall had thick black hair um with a muscular physique 
Um, after a while, the the deer got spooked and, and ran off. Um, the creature then turned its head to look straight at the guy. So it knew he was there. It just, mm. He just didn't pay him any mind at first. So it turns its head, looks straight at, at the guy, and he said it had a look about it as though to say, like, that was your fault. Like, you spooked the deer and that was my meal sort of yeah. thing. Like, the, the creature looked disgruntled <laughs> and sort of, so you know, bad. looked at the guy in a, you know, in a certain way. But saying that the, the creature did nothing but just look at him, you know, just stared at him with a disgruntled expression, um, I guess on its face or snout, whatever. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> the the guy, um, as expected, got spooked um, and again, chucked his car into gear and, and sped off uh, down the lane. Now, it was about, it was, it was late at night. I think it was about eight o'clock at night, something like that. Um, so it was dark and it had been snowing quite heavily. So he didn't really want to get out of his car at the time and follow a monster out into the wilderness, although he was an experienced, uh, you know, hunter. Um, so I think he might have become a, you've seen a 411 case, I yeah. think, if he'd done that. <laughs> yeah, bleed neck. Yeah. So, uh, so he actually returned the next morning. Um, he, he drove down the same trail, um, walked up to the, the same tree that, that he'd seen, uh, the creature uh, and basically inspected it uh, and what he found you know wasn't surprising you know sort of to him at this point but he basically found what looked like slightly enlarged canine prints um in the ground to the point where the, the thing was was probably so heavy that it actually obviously trod straight through the snow mm. and into the, the the ground you know beneath it um i didn't write this down but i do remember in the um in the account he said something like the the the, the sort of the mud uh, and the terrain in this particular county, um, Ottertail County, uh, would have been known for being quite um, tough, you know, and quite quite hardened. Yeah. So the fact that this creature was able to make an indented print in it mm. suggested to him that it was it was quite a heavy. It's like the big sort of soil animal that we have around these parts, yeah. which is very much full of clay. Yeah, pretty much like rock when yeah. it gets cold. Yeah, uh, and so that to him. Yeah, sort of, sort of told him that it was, um, yeah, it was a big old, it was a heavy uh, piece of equipment. It was a big old boy. Yeah, and he was able to leave these clear, slightly enlarged canine footprints um, in the in the ground. Right. And, the, and yeah, and that's what yeah, and that's what he found sort of the next day to sort of affirm that what he saw was at least canine in nature. Yeah. And uh, you know. And, Based on the, the size and, and everything, um, yeah. So that one I thought was, um, yeah, that was another cool one. Um, That's awesome. I've got one last one, which will be fairly quick. Um, you'll be pleased to know. Um, and this happens actually um, in our neck of the woods. Um, oh, really? In uh, Chelmsford, in Essex. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, this one was reported um, in 1993. Um, so again, another one that doesn't quite fit the. 10-year yeah. cycle um, sort of pattern. Um, but the the person who reported the account um, lived in a very rural area surrounded by thick woodland and fields um, just, outside, uh, just outside Chelmsford, I believe. Um, and I believe that it took place on a small farm um, down a single-track road, um, mm. just going by their descriptions of the, the sort of the area. Um, the first encounter of the creature that they had um, was actually just in their in their garden um, or backyard for our uh, American listeners um, at around 11.30 at night. Um, the person that is re- retelling the story was about 14 years old at the time. Um, his stepdad um, hadn't long been back from uh, the pub, was making food um, in the kitchen. So he, he joined his dad in the kitchen to, to grab a drink. Um the floodlight in the back garden was switched off um, as it was so blinding, it would, it would come sort of back into the, the house. Yeah. So they very rarely, you know, kind of had it on. Um, but d- despite this, and so with, with the fact that the light was off and how dark it would have been at you know that time of night, stepdad said that he could see something moving in, in the garden. Um, he asked the, the stepson um, to help him look. Uh, and in doing so, he switched the floodlight on. And then he said at that point, as clear as day, what he saw, what him and his stepdad saw was shocking. He said it was a huge creature, dog-like, 
this time on all fours, drinking from the pond in, in, in their garden. It had black fl- uh, fur, it was heavy built and very muscular. It turned to look at the house, um, but it wouldn't have been able to have seen them because of the blinding light from the, the security light, basically. Mm. Um, the creature then stood up on its hind legs and it leapt over a 10-foot hedge with ease. Whoa. Didn't even just, just whoosh, straight up and over sort of thing. Didn't even... Stand in leap of 10 feet. Yeah, basically. Um, they turned off the light and basically just went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Had a cup of tea and... <laughs> they said nope. I thought nope. Yeah. Nope. Um, the next morning, the, the stepdad told him that he was never to, you know, speak of it again. And whenever the son, the stepson tried to bring it up, the stepdad was just like, no, nah, I don't know what you mean. No, it, it never oh. happened. You know, we saw something else or, you know, we were tired or I was drunk or, you know, there's always an excuse as yeah. to either what it was or why he didn't want to um, sort of uh, talk about it. Um, now, in the same area, um, a dog walker um, saw something similar run across their path um, into the into the woods um, to the point where the dogs then refused to go any further down this particular path. And it was always a regular walking mm. walking route for, you know, for this uh, this person and, and their dogs. It was reported to local police um, and local media outlets. Um, the police then decided to sort of go along and they basically took casts of the, the prints. And then from that point on, it all just went very quiet. It was never reported in, in the local press. It, it was never... You know, they, they were never contacted by the local police as to, you know, kind of what they determined or, you know, what was, you mm. know, kind of found. Um, nothing was just ever acknowledged or, you know, mentioned again, but it fit the description of what this guy and his stepson had seen, you know, not long uh, before. of Just this enlarged, sort of almost humanoid A giant dog. dog. Yeah. Yeah, like giant. That's crazy. Yeah. Dire wolf, human, half hybrid sort of thing. Half breed sort of thing. Well, so, yeah, it's weird that they didn't they didn't go any. Yeah, further the police didn't take like it. That. Whether they just decided oh, it was just a big dog, or you know, and thought nothing of it. Mm. Um, like the early nineties as well. The like, local newspapers, as we know, like the Echo, for instance, they'll yeah. print anything. Oh, they would have jumped on that. A- any any story to sort of generate a bit of interest. There's hardly in, anything going on usually. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> so anything of that nature to either put people on warning or you know, to try and get other, you know, stories or, mm. you know, even just to sell newspapers, they would have printed something, even if at the end it came to nothing or it got disproved, excuse me, got disproven, it still would have wound up somewhere local in local papers, if yeah. not like, you know, I, I get it, it might not have made it to national press, but at least local newspapers would have picked it up. Um, mm. Social would media like, wouldn't have been a thing then, so it's not like it could have got shared that way. So that would really have been the only well, way. I could, to, I could see a headline right now. It'd be like giant dog on the loose in Chelmsford. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. So with a description yeah. of like two other dog walkers and and such, yeah. you know. Well, they careful. jumped on the uh, they jumped on the beast of Bodmin thing, didn't they? When mm-hmm. out in Bodmin Moors. Um, well, yeah, because that had a big they, bloody cat. Yeah, big old bloody yeah. But that's what I mean. They they jumped on that straight away and accounts and sightings and everything else have been you know sort of shared since so why not this you know it's no you know technically it's no different yeah, right. yeah i'm not i'm not you know deliberately getting conspiratorial <clears throat> with it but mm. if the police even went there investigated it took casts and everything and then it just stopped because you know if anything you'd you'd want to come out and say oh yeah no we just found it was a large dog yeah or it was two prints mushed together which why which is why it looked bigger or you know, you must have just seen, which is, which is what they say about Bigfoot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, or yeah, you, you must have just seen a particularly large mountain dog or something. I don't know. You, you would have thought that they would have come out with something to yeah. try and alleviate fears, to just to get people to forget about it. But the fact that they they themselves went quiet, I don't know. I don't know. It could it, lend itself to. It doesn't answer any questions, does it? Doesn't answer any questions, and it, but it also doesn't offer up any alternatives. So, mm. did they see? what they saw sort of thing, you know, did they yeah. actually see a large humanoid dog man in rural Essex? <laughs> God. Just like how, you know, everyone in, yeah. That's incredible though. Imagine sort that. Didn't, yeah. I'd love to, well, I'd love to see it, but also wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. So. I know what you mean. Yeah. I'd love to see it from a distance. <laughs> well, this is the thing, right? This is something that I've, 
I've found with some of the stories that, that I've come across is yeah. that there's not necessarily this idea that the dog man is a danger to us. No. It, this is this is what I found was quite interesting. And, um, yeah. you know, it seems to be that there's a lot of stories where you get this idea that it's sinister, that it's scary and everything else is happening in the dead of night, that, yeah. that sort of thing. And, it, you know, these are all situations that would put you on edge anyway. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, but I came across the idea that um, the dog man interacts with people on a telepathic level. Right, okay. And I've got a few yeah, stories. Yeah, I knew you'd gone down a different route with it, yeah. Yeah, because I knew that, I like that. I knew that you'd, you'd go down the mm. main street sort yeah. of thing and, I'd, you know... You know me, yeah. I'm a trailblazer. <laughs> yeah, trailblazer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll always take Easy Street if that's the route to go. Down, yeah, <laughs> to go down. Yeah, and I'll go from A to B, via to Z and back again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if last episode's anything to go on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. So um, I found uh, one very interesting, and it's quite a bizarre account, um, and nice. it comes from a witness who posted her experience on the site TruthSeekerHighway.com. Right. Um, and claims that she had a regular telepathic contact with a dog man that called itself Tulac. Actually, you know, I was really hoping you'd be like, it called itself John. <laughs> Tim. <laughs> yeah. really loved, he really loved the name Belly Bob. And so, <laughs> yeah. He's, actually, well, ironically, he called himself Fido. Uh, <laughs> and he was a good boy. <laughs> he was a very good boy. <laughs> and he loved the belly rub. Yeah, yeah. yeah don't, don't. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> So that's, what uh, Sam, that's exactly what Sam would do, my other half. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was, just was a big cuddle, big belly rub. No. Nope. No. <laughs> you claw your How face off. many <laughs> times? <laughs> yeah. so, so Tulak, sorry. Yeah, Tulak. Sorry. Um, this entity was first encountered by the witness um, in a rugged, in the rugged uh, Sandia, Sandia Mountains of North um, New Mexico, right. where she was out on a hike with her fiancé. Um, at one point during their walk, her fiancé suddenly called out to her to be careful of a bear up ahead. And looking forward, she saw that what he was talking about was the hulking brown shape. And mm. it could be seen and heard crashing through the thicket. So seeing a bear out there she it was, was quite unexpected. Because um, apparently in, in New Mexico, there's not a huge bear population. Right. Um, but what's even stranger was what happened next now she goes on to say as i watched the bear run away out of some trees to the right of it i saw a very strange and i mean very strange person walking alongside the bear all right its stride was like something i'd never seen before but every step it took there must have been four or five feet in between its back was hunched over at first and i thought it maybe it was a person carrying a, a backpack my mind was going 100 miles a minute, trying to figure out what it was I was actually looking at. Yeah. Then I realised it wasn't a backpack, but it was the man's back, or a man's back. Right. Then I saw how strange the colour it was. At this point, I had no idea what I was looking at. It was uh, grey, dark brown, with a hint of purple. Patches right. of purple. So is this the person walking with the creature, or is this the creature that she's talking about? This is this is what she perceives to at first to be to be a what, man, right? Gotcha. Moving okay. through the thicket, right? So it's quite dense forestry yeah. at, at this okay. point. So there seemed to be patches of what looked like to me purple, but who knows what it was I was actually looking at? Yeah, it didn't turn, um, and I looked and looked at me, but it didn't turn and look at me, but kept very a very very fast pace up the path. Right. Then said to Michael. Beyonce, how weird this this man was, but he couldn't see him. Michael couldn't see this man. Right. I then pointed out to the location of where he went, and as we walked in that direction, that is when the horrible feeling hit us both in the gut. Something told us both to stay back, and it was a very clear message, and one I was willing to ignore, but Michael mm. wasn't. I wanted to go down further down the path, but Michael was like, no, it's, it's too dangerous. Yeah. I must say... The feeling in our gut was like a slight punch, almost a nauseating feeling. It affected our heart rates and our adrenaline was racing. Yeah. I could feel my heartbeat all over my body. It was at this point that I decided to take photos in the direction that the strange hiker had gone. Mm. It was in one of the photos that we captured and what turned out to be a dog man. Wow. 
he was standing and watching us as we were trying to figure out what to do next. We didn't smell him at all. He didn't have an odour any more than the bear did. Mm. Um, but I must say, we sure did feel it. Mm. So, again, it's like that idea of that ultra um, infrasound. Yeah. A thing that we that we spoke about yeah. on, on the first uh, first season. So even after they got home, the witness says that she maintained a, a sort of psychic connection with this dog mm. man. Um, and that she learned a lot of new and surprising things through this. She was able to glean from her exchanges with Tulak. She later realized its name was Tulak. Was that despite their fierce appearance, the dog men are non-violent. And they're not vicious creatures at all. So she goes on to say... Tulak was, has relayed interesting information to me. The most obvious is that they don't like humans. Right. You and me both, enough. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they understand their place in the forests and they don't put out their threatening stance to other animals in the forest except when they hunt. Uh, as far as how they interact with each other, he stated that they have an understanding with each other. He preferred his solitude and said that he particularly didn't like to stay with a group but he knew that they roamed around as yeah. well to me he was obviously intelligent beyond just a beast in the woods mm. he is extremely distrustful of people as apparently most cryptids are yeah he didn't go into any more detail than, than this but i'm pretty sure that he was he wasn't what is depicted on tv and Movies, yeah. you know, so the old werewolf sort of yeah, thing. Exactly, yeah, exactly, um, Apparently, Tulek said that he had, um, he and the large brown bear had been palling around for years. Right, okay, so just, right, so the the fiancé, Michael, mm. he initially did see a bear He did see distance. a bear, and he went, hang on, watch out. But then when she there. looked, presumably the bit bear had disappeared and no, was replaced by a... Well, she spotted the bear as well. So Jeez, they both right. came to a stop on, on the trail. Seeing that there was a bear ahead. Yep. Right. And then she noticed something else moving out there as well. Ah, right. Okay. So Gotcha. Yeah. So gotcha, it, it yeah. turns I'm out that this now. dog yeah. man potentially had been buddying up with this bear for a little while. Um, and she makes a good point here that like, people put human issues and temperaments to other creatures and beings that have nothing to do with them at all. So we anthropomorphize a lot of mm. things. So... Um, so like for instance, when, uh, when you see like a great white shark mm. swimming up to the shark cage and it's, it looks terrifying, it's got those big black eyes and gaping maw with all these yeah. teeth and it's, it's just gently gumming this, sort this, this box, like what the hell the is this? Or, yeah. Investigating sort of thing. Kind yeah. of put, like, that's what that reminded me of that story from, um, that second West Virginia story where it, yeah. it, it came out, like tried to open up the door, walked yeah. down, tried to open the door, was like, oh, fuck it then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then sculpt off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah so that it's an interesting thing from all the accounts, isn't it? So far, is that there, there's been no kind of threatening, overly threatening behaviour, or mm. it's like the you know the dogmen are just happy to kind of coexist as long as you don't interrupt, like their hunt, for example, or, or you know interrupt what it is they're you know they're doing. Um, so Sorry, Google, Pat, let me was it Google getting involved? Yeah, 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 <laughs> listening to us. Uh-oh. They're always listening. <laughs> They're always listening. I'll, looking... bet, I'll, I'll bet you is Zuck the Cuck. And all. Yeah, I'll probably, bet he's involved yeah. in all. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's reptilian, isn't he? So he, he must know a dog man. So. <laughs> yeah, you know that, right? There's nothing going on behind those eyes. Yeah, exactly. Nothing human anyway. No. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's interesting... Um, yeah, that there's been no, like, no one's been, except for that, I suppose there was that one early on where I read where he was, the guy just said that he was being, um, being attacked by wild dogs mm. and that he noticed one of them was, like, walked off in, you know, on, on two legs even, sort of thing. So yeah. It's very odd that it seems like it's there's no the, sort of yeah. But they don't attack. care. They they get disgruntled. So like again, like if you interrupt their hunt or if you cause them to like lose a meal, mm. then they'll look around and be like, oh, f- no, "Thanks for that." Yeah, <laughs> cheers, <mate. laughs> yeah thanks. cheers. Thanks for that. Yeah. Yes. But uh, yeah, but aside from that, there doesn't seem to be any kind of ill feeling. If no. anything, it's yeah, as you say, it's what we put on them mm. and create that ill feeling as opposed to actually being reciprocated in that yeah. way. Yeah. And that one um, occurred in two thousand and seven. 
Well, okay. So another, another seven. seven. Yeah, another seven. Another seven, okay. which I think is a bit weird. Yeah. Um, I don't have a date on this particular one, um, but this one actually comes from uh, The Week in Weird. Oh, okay. Greg and Dana's yeah, website. Greg and Dana, yeah. Um, as by a witness who calls himself that, uh, Zay. Oh, he said they. Oh, here I we nearly, go. Nearly went. <laughs> nearly went there. Zay. Zay Zem and Zer and, <laughs> Zer and Zas. Yeah, well, let's not get into that. <laughs> but he calls himself Zay, as in like his name, maybe. Yeah. Day, um, rather than a pronoun. Yeah. Um, and he claims that um, he's had a regular telepathic contact with a dog man in the forest of rural Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Right. So similar to the previous report, Zay had um, said that the creatures are non-violent or malevolent in any way. Um, and that although they are frustrated and displeased by humankind, they hold no ill will or hatred toward us, apparently. Right. So Zay... Explained in uh, of these sort of beings, he says, um, very few people understand what courage really is. Courage is not about facing a werewolf because I have visited with a werewolf in a sighting area more than once. Courage is not about traversing through dogman areas with guns and ammunition because mm. I've visited dogman territories numerous times, always alone and unarmed. If I'm not worthy to be here, then the dog man can have me. But I have yet to experience aggression from them and have several subtle encounters with dog men. I've recently discovered a free toed put- footprint that was almost as big as the palm of my hand and was so fresh that the dog man could have been watching me as I passed by. Wow. Most people are trapped inside the bubble with their own experiences. I reach out to the life around me. <laughs> all right okay it's one of them <laughs> yeah, yeah i don't write books nor am i well known i'm a bachelor that lives in a very quiet and private life and of one of the things i do love is to get acquainted with the unknown anger fear and arrogance rarely wins anyone friends that are truly trustworthy that kind of feelings that you emanate from your life force are the same ones that you're going to attract you I've literally had dogmen approach me after dark, announcing their presence with sounds that defy what you would no- would reason as being from average animals. Right. I've heard mystical heavy breathing sounds, the non-aggressive growls of acknowledgement. I even had a dogman creep up on me for 15 minutes that I was aware of the entire time. And when I sensed that it was very close, perhaps right behind me, I had a black and white telepathic image of a canine head and snout that came into my mind. It's an amazing world. <laughs> and I admittedly soiled myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I've soiled myself. So he goes on to say, if given the choice between passing through cryptid territory or gang territory, I'd choose dog men and Bigfoot over humans any day. It's I mean, that goes really. without saying. Oh, I know, really, right, yeah. I mean, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> I've, I've walked through dog men territories in Pennsylvania before without fear because I trust them. We've a kind of trust that I don't often have for humans. There are very few people in this world I would genuinely trust. I know just how arrogant and angry-spirited people can be. I know I'm quite a bit angry about my own kind and I'm far more interested in knowing more about cryptids and protecting the habitats from further human development and destruction. Um, It's quite spiritual, isn't it? It goes on a bit of a rant there, doesn't it? A bit of a self-affirming... I thought oh, I did run. I thought I'd yeah. include it because yeah. it, I I understand what he's saying. I get saying. what he's saying. I do. I, I understand it and almost agree to you know to an extent. Cryptid activist. Who would have thought it? I know, right? Yeah. There's an activist for anything. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if there's a soapbox, someone will stand on it. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah. yeah. Clearly. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, I thought it was that, that that was quite interesting because it seems like from what I looked into on the more telepathic side of, of the dogman mm. thing was th- that seems to be what the community feels as yeah. well in that there is, <clears throat> excuse me, there's this idea that the dogman doesn't want to, is not out there to hunt us yeah. or to get us, you know, we'd, we're in its way sort of thing. So uh, while these reports so far seem to portray the dog man in more benevolent terms. Mm. Um, there's others that do cast a, a more sinister light upon them. Right, okay. So I wanted to give a little bit more of a, 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 a 
a dichotomy to it, that yeah. there is a difference. That there's, sometimes they're not always great. So yeah. this article comes from um, the cloakedhedgehog.wordpress.com. Um, it's a what? site that's developed um, and devoted to dogman and werewolf phenomena right across the world. Um, and there's a an account that was relayed by Anna M. K. Larson, who uh, coincidentally runs a site and appears to have spent quite a bit of time mapping and chronicling the dogman sightings and encounters. Oh right, okay. So cool. She has also had a like specifically documented a few accounts of telepathy with dogmen. Now she says this when it comes to ESP or extrasensory perception, I have heard people talk about perceiving the dogman in ways other than through the regular five senses. Many talk about creatures sending them message telepathically, say, saying not to talk about their sighting or mm. else. So keep it shnum. Yeah, yeah. Many talk about having a distinct gut feeling when things are around, and some even say that they've had like their sight jacked. So sight right. jacked, um, if you're unfamiliar with the term, is the idea that you get to see the world through the dog man's eyes. Right. And potentially the dog man gets to see the world through your eyes. So he gets to see your location sort of thing. Right. Sort of like um, a psychic Zoom call. Yeah. That sort of yeah. thing, really. Yeah. Um, I like that. She then relays a personal experience she had uh, along these sort of lines, which points towards a psychic ability to lash out mentally and which supposedly happened in the mid-90s. Right. So... She was outside her house stargazing one evening and as she looked up at the blanket of glittering stars across the vast inky canvas of the night sky, she claims that she was suddenly overcome with a heavy sense of dread that seemed to emanate from the small grove nearby. She goes on to say, I definitely sent something that was in the grove below the fence, something very, very bad. I felt it like a thousand needles on my skin and a horrible paralysis and a heavy fear came overcame me, which seemed to project onto me by someone or something else. I heard my own voice in my head. She kind of laments that it's her higher self. Right. And it says, go inside, but do not run. And I did it twice. The ones inside, I came, I had calmed down a bit. And after about 10 minutes, I opened the window and immediately heard a god-awful screaming howl from, the, sem from a, the direction of the cemetery a block away. The window was closed pretty quickly after that. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Um, Larson then goes on to explain that she routinely was routinely the subject of some form of psychic attack by, by these creatures, describing it as a sort of um, set up, upon, like she was kind of set upon by uh, tentacles of energy. Um, okay. I suppose if you've got any sort of idea of, of, of psychic... Um, visualization or anything like that. It would yeah. look like um, tentacles of energy that ego has mm. in Guardians of the Galaxy, that sort of thing. Yeah. And it was uh, it was most pronounced when she was engaged with research or looking at the Dogman phenomena. Mm, okay. So again, it's the idea that it knows that it's looking at you. Yeah. You're looking. That's well, so what you it. said before. If you look at it strong enough, they'll always be looking back. Yeah. 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 And um, yeah, I've had uh, some slightly weirder sensations as well uh, which i'll go right. over later on right okay yeah. well you have personally yeah personally right yeah. okay um oh cool i've been looking okay. into a specific area right um, okay it could be psychosomatic cool yeah but i don't know we'll see okay so ac ac cool. according to larson mm. it seems almost as if they don't want her looking at it too closely and they're trying to scare her off the subject mm. she goes on again to say I have felt them in the in the ether, as I call it, while stu studying the subject. I perceive it as tentacles of energy searching through the ether, searching for the one searching them. The more I read and studied, the more I could perceive them getting closer. Sometimes I, I took breaks when I felt them coming too close. Right. And while working on these maps of dogman sightings two years ago, things got really intense for a long time. Months of reading about and mapping Dogman reports for at least 16 hours a day, I felt the tentacles, but I ignored them as she wanted to finish the, the maps. Right. One day there was uh, a connection made and I could feel it so distinctly. It was contact and they had found me. Uh oh. 
<laughs> luckily, I understand that they only found <clears throat> me mentally. Right. They still didn't know where she was actually located. They hadn't found her physically. Oh, uh, right. Okay. Yeah, after this experience, I became more afraid of the dark. I had some weird experiences with a mirror in my bedroom that I finally had to get rid of. Um, I'm not entirely sure what, what that was. I tried looking into that. I tried looking at her other blogs and, right. and such, but I couldn't see what couldn't this weird what? experience was. Right. Whether, you know, she saw a reflection of a, a canine she saw or something, something like that. Yeah, or uh, her reflection was a canine or... <laughs> or maybe she was scrying. Or yeah. something like yeah. this. Um, mirrors are supposed yeah. to be gateways, uh, psychically. Mm. Um, I sometimes force myself um, to, to, to look out the window. Yeah. Um, she's, like I say, she sometimes forces herself because she doesn't want to live in fear. But it's getting no. a lot, lot harder. Yeah, I get that, yeah. Um, and these are less and less more like the, the physical sort of interactions mm. with Dogman, but they're getting mental projections. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, and potentially, I mean, telepathy could very well be um, a form of communication, like a legitimate yeah. form of... of um, well, we've come across it, you know, before, haven't we? In mm. the, you know, more recently in the uh, Trolls episode. That's right. When that yeah. lady and her sister out on the road um, saw the road troll mm. who communicated with them and said, or gave them the feeling that something bad even was going to happen or had already happened, which made them completely change their plans. They and were going to go, go back. to the mall, go, they? Yeah, they were going to go to the mall. They saw the the figure on the side of the road. She suddenly was overcome with this emotion and this kind of feeling that something bad had either happened or was about to happen. Mm. They got home. A sister received a call to say that her, her son had um, severely Injured himself. Yeah, I think he broke that, an arm, didn't he? Broke his arm, yeah. falling out of the tree. Yeah, um, and so they wouldn't have been able to get her when if she was at the mall. No, they wouldn't have got there had mm. had they been at the mall. Yeah, so it was almost like a, yeah, a kind of a helpful, you know, sort of helpful, warning, helpful almost. road troll. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you don't get many of them. <laughs> yeah, 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 and also again, um, you know, the, the the big one in uh, injured cold. Yeah, of course. His communication was was mostly telepathic, wasn't it? With uh, with Woody, so. Yeah, it keeps cropping up. How, however weird you think the cryptid might be, there's always, almost always, going to be a, a psycho element to it. Yeah, you know, as well in that respect. Yeah, so. absolutely. Even like the the last episode that we did when we we looked into the idea of portals and ancient cultures and, and stuff like this, there's yeah. a, there's a lot of further evidence to suggest that telepathy was something that we was able to do innately. Yes. So yeah. we was just able to do it. We mm. just had a development for it. Yeah. Um, and further on what your theory was about, you know, there being so many more um, waves of electricity or radio waves, yeah. interference. Interference, that yeah. Maybe we're not all able to do it straight off the bat, you know. So yeah, it's a blocker mm. sort of thing, yeah. yeah you got, you've got a, you know, maybe it's something that's, you know, deep within us, but as soon as you're born, you're, imme you're immediately under all of these blockers and these mm. waves and signals and whatever else, you know, is it because, you know, the reason why we can't all do it, is that because there's only some of us that are maybe tuned slightly differently that, that you know, we're able to mm. access it or they practice enough that they can, you know, re-engage with it. Maybe you know, it's like an atrophy kind of muscle, thing. isn't it? Yeah. You know, maybe maybe there yeah. is just an atrophy on that particular mm. skill. Yeah. And, you know, you you, you stop doing yeah. it, you know, and yeah. you're not as good as doing it. Or you don't realise that you can do it until... Interactions like this, yeah. when someone else, you know, opens that for you, I guess, mm. yeah. you know, and forces you to to know. It's very weird. I've got yeah. one more um, story about um, there being some sort of psychic connection with with Dogman. Okay, um, and this one is is, is ominous in a sense, um, and it was an account given by Bigfoot and Dogman researcher Parker Duval. Right, um, and he went on an episode of Coast to Coast AM. Yeah, and that one in particular was called Dogman and. Oh, bit sorry, Bigfoot and Dogman, uh, with host Connie Willis. Devoe Devoe was um has spent years studying the Dogman phenomenon in his home state of Kentucky, yep. and told Willis that he had made a telepathic connection with a Dogman called uh, Roger. So what you talk about, Willis? <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was going to do that somehow. I knew he was going to. I was do waiting that. for a way to get it in there. <laughs> what you talk about, Willis? <laughs> God, different Sorry. strokes, man. That's, that's old school. I know, man. <laughs> that is old school. So yeah, Roger, not Willis. 
um, has uh, created a relationship with these, and he, he created this relationship with these entities. So, in particular, he was basically he had a, a liaison in Roja. Oh, um, so, according to Devol, the Dogmen are a warrior-like race that utilize the abilities to fill humans with terror and a primal fear, as this is. A this is apparently the state in which people learn most about themselves. Yeah. Which, yeah. Makes sense. I can get that. Yeah. Very, very true. Yeah. He also sent the program several images of what he claims was one of the dogmen and a couple of where the aftermath of a dogman attacks on livestock. Yeah. Now, I did look at these, these images and the attacks on the livestock, it's like they've, on the hindquarters, it's like they've been slashed. Right. So rather than there being bite marks or anything like this from mm. like a wolf or, or something, yeah, it's, it looks like claw marks. Yeah. As for the picture of the dog man, mm, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> right, what do you mean by? Well, it's, it's highly zoomed in. Oh, they're actually taking a picture? They actually of, took oh, a picture sorry, right, of okay. the dog man. Right, right, right. It's highly zoomed in. Yeah. Um, it looks like it's been taken on a potato as well. It's, it's like the one I referenced right at the start. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit of a shame that all really of these... Really dark, really zoomed in, yeah. pixelated, yeah. If you, It's kind of like a one of those... Um, so if you squint and turn it slightly. Yeah, one of those magic images. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. And that you can you can see the outline of, 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 a, of a dark mass yeah. with pointed ears. Yeah. That's, yeah, much, it's, yeah. You know, so I don't know. I wonder if we're talking about the same, the same one. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. Yeah. Well, it's what, possible. Yeah. So it is hard to know that just what to make of these sort of accounts or or what to discern just how much truth there are. Yeah, exactly. Um, but they certainly do add a new weird dimension to the idea of the dog man. Mate, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, so these creatures are quite entrenched in the outer fringes of cryptozoology, seemingly defying any sort of biological explanation as it is. Yeah. And these accounts of, of weird telepathic abilities further make this an area in which we largely have no idea of what it is that we're dealing with. Yeah. Um, whether we're you know, looking at werewolves or thought forms, demons, ghosts, or something completely different entirely. Yeah. Um, the dog man is most certainly seems to just get stranger and stranger mm. with well, re- really no signs of waning. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like we, we've, you know, this has been going for you know hundred odd years or whatever. We've, you know, I've only just sort of really come to sort of, you know, know about it. And it's one of those synchronicity things, mm. isn't it? I, you know, you start Googling it, you start looking into it. Suddenly the crypto pages that I'm, or groups that I'm part of on social media yeah. start sharing the, stories and, and accounts and articles and you think oh, how do they how does it all yeah is sync I mean, up it's just it's nuts yeah and yeah. so yeah, it's, it's gaining prominence even now and I, i'm not entirely sure whether it's the anniversary of a sighting or whether people are just having more of them recently where people are getting more um in tuned like you know with themselves psychically and whatever whether mm. that's kind of just you know instantly kind of opening something up starting or, you to interact with a world you've never seen before yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So, I mean... Th- th- it, is it all one of the same in that respect? Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's, it's very strange. I mean, mm. I mean, I don't know how you feel about it, but, like, is the dog man, like, just this terrible beast that's roaming around, like, the North American continent? Or is it a, a more peaceful, misunderstood yeah. sort of creature that prefers to be left alone? Yeah, well, I like, kind of imagine, like, especially when you said about them being, like, a warrior um, sort of community... Um, I instantly thought of like Anubis. Yeah. Well, obviously from That's ancient exactly Egypt of how that, you know, the, the sort of the, you know, the canine head, but the, the, the human, you know, sort of body, you know, the elongated, you know, sort of limbs. I instantly you know, thought of the Mummy Returns. Yeah. Mummy Returns. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Army of Anubis. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, are you... You ready to uh, yeah, I'm ready get to get off, off the fence? fence yeah. Man. yeah. So, so what do you think? Like, is it is it this terrible beast thing that's killing livestock and scaring residents, or is it just a peaceful, curious creature? I probably changed my thoughts on it pretty much since you presented your um, your evidence mm. um, on it and, and the interactions that you found. Um, 
so I suppose in answer to the your question, I'd say no, they're not just a random beast walking around the countrysides and wilderness, you know, hunting people and mm. killing livestock and, and that kind of thing. I think much like us, um, you know, if they do exist, they they are just inquisitive race species mm. um, entity, whatever you know, wh- however you want to label it, um, you know, that keep themselves to themselves. You know, they they do their own thing. You know, if you don't get in their way or or threaten them, then they're happy to just leave you to it mm. and and you know and sort of get on with it. Um, I was probably going to be on the side of the fence of not really believing it and just thinking that people had probably just seen, you know, a, a big, a, you know, just a particularly big dog mm. or, you know, an escaped you know, leopard or something, or, you know, yeah, something, some, that, something, something along that logical ilk. Yeah. That we, yeah. I That's probably you. the route I was going down, mostly because stuff that I had found hadn't really been um, overly... Uh, compelling really mm. you know interesting stories you know great stories great accounts you know I, i'm always you know i'm more inclined to believe the ones that have got a little bit more about them in terms of you know they give them a location a day a time and really go into the small details you know like the other one we said he visited his grandparents mm. he went to the kitchen to get a drink then he went to get some candy and then his grandmother you know all those little details that i think sometimes are kind of left out people just want to jump straight to the site and or the encounter but miss out the build-up so there's a couple of things like you know, a couple of stories like that that, that kind of set me on a, a certain path. But then it was your your accounts and where it's going down the um the more psychological, you know, kind of route mm. in, in with the encounters. And we know from, you know, the, the types of, you know, role trolls and you know, injured cold and 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 them types that communicate in such a way. Um and I think it would be, you know, remiss of me to believe in those. But then but then discount this one. Yeah, can't pick and choose. Sort of thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You gotcha. can't sort of. Yeah, if you believe one, if there's enough of a, you know, similarity, um, you know, with with another one, then you've got to at least you know give it sort of the, the time and day. So, mm. <clears throat> yeah, I'd, I'd say, I'm more on the side of the fence now, in terms of but but uh, you know believing in it as an entity, um, and you know much like, you know sort of. Bigfoot and some of the others that it, it takes on an appearance that either that it knows or that it feels that we would know, and so we can mm. recognise it as something because we probably wouldn't recognise it in its you know true form maybe, mm. and that it takes that more uh, it's sort of animalistic approach, especially because of where the sightings normally are, and so yeah. that people can think, oh well, you, you know, you'd expect to see that animal out in in the wilderness, and so that kind of alleviates any you know kind of undue attention or any, any mm. unwanted. Um, attention um so yeah I, I think i've yeah i think i've sort of changed my opinion in, in that respect and i'd go more down the that they are just a, a creature you know a species pop, mm. you know maybe even an entity you know a spirit that that sort of inhabits the the wilderness and, and these locations and just goes about their this sort of day and yeah. yeah, keeps themselves to themselves. You know, why would they give these warnings of, to, of people on trails to say, to turn around and go inside? Mm. You know, don't bring attention to yourself. Don't run. You know, don't panic. Just turn around and go the other way. Don't come back here or, you know, leave us alone or leave me alone or whatever it may be. So, you know, why would they just be... You because know, some of these accounts at least would end in death or absolutely a mauling or some sort of aggressive attack. Yeah. But there's there's none of that. Yeah, I mean, with with risk of anthropomorphizing <laughs> the idea <laughs> yeah. of, of the dog man, you it's exactly what isolated tribes do. Mm. You know, we have isolated tribes that, that that live in the Amazon or North Sentinel North Sentinel Island that you know they they do have this display of turn around or yeah we will sort you out. This is your warning. Yeah, yeah take it. <laughs> yeah, and and <clears throat> it makes perfect sense. I mean, I, I've got a not. I've got this this feeling that these creatures, Dogman, Bigfoot, all these other mm. sort of seemingly intelligent creatures, mm. they have either an intelligence that is either on par with us mm. or potentially a little bit higher. Greater than, yeah. Greater than us, you know, because we tend to measure and quantify our 
intelligence by the stuff we can create, not necessarily the things that we do. You know, so we've yeah. created these giant cities. We've created these uh, machines that cart us from one place to another mm. that now do it without us having to control it. Yeah. You know, so we we have this idea... Material that items. Exactly, things, yeah. this material knowledge. We have this material intelligence that other creatures might not. Mm. So we... I mean, we even when we're um, measuring the, ever, the, the, the intelligence of chimpanzees... Oh, that one's yeah. that one's you know a bit more intelligent because it's using a stick, yeah, to get the the, the termites or it can out. Use of a that puzzle plant. or yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, exactly. It's more so that its its tool usage yeah. um, is an evidence of its intelligence, the basic intelligence. Yeah. yeah, not like I mean potentially. Yeah, the idea that um, these creatures can interact with us on a telepathic level. Mm. That's got to be a I higher intelligence, right? Absolutely. If they're the one instigating it. Well, it's the and idea. And we're like dumbfounded, like, oh my God, what's this? Well, like, if we try and simplify it, and when you try and interact with, say, a dog, mm. you know, you can look at a dog and you, you're in your head, you're going, I have no idea what that dog is trying to tell me. But you can see the dog looking at you intently and it's trying to tell you something. Yeah. But you're not picking it no. up. No. So <laughs> potentially, yeah. You know, all these animals that we're around all of the time potentially could be interacting telepathically. Where we don't know how to do that. Yeah. You know, so you get like these animal whisperers and like mm. the horse whisperer, the dog whisperer and yeah. and all these sort of, maybe they are able to interact with these creatures in a telepathic they manner. Hear or feel something that, you know, the rest of us don't. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, yeah I, 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 I very much yeah. do believe in the, the ability that we can telepathically interact with creatures and that there are mm. creatures out there that can do the same with us. Yeah. You know, the idea of infrasound, you know, that mm. they can send out an infrasonic sing signal that will make us feel a certain way. Yeah. It's a warning. Yeah. You know, um, there being a, a creature like Dogman that can live within the wilderness, I don't know. I'm, I'm not entirely sure about that particular one. Yeah. But with it being <coughs> potentially a, an interdimensional creature. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean, yeah, something that just lives in the wilderness and just kind of goes around hunting and, and killing whatever. That, yeah, that bit I'm not so sure about. But, yeah, like a, a, a more of a spiritual creature or a, a, an entity. Mm. Um, or, yeah, interdimensional. You know, well, we much like the Bigfoot theory and stuff. Last episode yeah. we explored the, the potential of portals. Portals, yeah. Electromagnetic portals opening and closing. Yeah. Um, and seemingly if they're on a 10-year cycle, yeah. Then could that be when the portal opens? Opens yeah. and closes for a certain yeah. amount of time, and and they they just walk in and out. You know, there might be Come something to hunt and then go back. Exactly, or, there might yeah. be something on this side, like that. Maybe they've got a, a taste for elk, yeah. or, or something <laughs> yeah. like that. You yeah. know, or he wants to run with his bear mate, yeah, or yeah. something. You know, it's it, yeah, yeah. There's there's so much. There's something more to it than just a dog man as a creature. Mm roaming the wilderness in you know in certain locations i think there's certainly you know especially with the uh you know with the evidence that you know that you brought forward i think it, it just adds more to it it gives it a little bit more mm. credence i yeah, think yeah it's, it's like um a different element as well well yeah and also i think it's well with like what i said about them um, anthropomorphizing it so th this is this big scary creature is coming towards you you're shitting yourself because it's a big scary looking creature but you don't know what its intention is. No. So this, you know, you've, you've turned around the corner. So that, that one um, in 2017 where he came around that, that blind corner, stopped because there was this huge mm. creature in the way. And it, it was like, it looked at him. It was like, right, put yeah, his hand on the bike. Right, yeah. here we go. Let's go and have a word. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. So like, try to open up the door. Right, okay, that was not opening. The other one, oh, all right, whatever. I'll leave him to it then. Yeah. See you later then. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe he was Don't coming worry. over to say... Don't need to be scared. Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, <laughs> you're you're good. Yeah, just yeah. chill out. Um, yeah, let me cross the road unharmed, and you'll live. Yeah. <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, we've got. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll use the analogy of the great white shark. You know, you, yeah. you're in that little cage thing. He's yeah. probably never actually seen anything like this before, and he's going, "What the hell is that? What are you? Yeah, uh, I'm exactly, going to go and yeah. investigate that." So it's almost like you put your intention on the anthropomorphizing it creature sort of thing yeah. so when you look at something that you don't understand 
your instinct would be to kill it or to yeah. hunt it or to trap it or whatever because you don't understand it. You think, oh, sod that. Yeah. And you don't want to be, a, you know, a victim of it. But that thing could just be sitting again. I, I couldn't care less that you're here. Just like, just leave me alone. Yeah, yeah it's like... Um, <laughs> well, like, why are you in my territory? Like, I've not seen you before or... It's like you know. when we first discovered uh, chimpanzees and gorillas and we wanted mm. to get involved in their in their world and such. And, and before that, they'd never seen anything like us. Yeah. You know, so we had to be very, very careful with it. Mm. You know, we couldn't just go and plonk ourselves right down next to it because it... Sh- Go tear your head off. It'd go ape shit. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> you know? And it would. It would tear your head off. Yeah. You know. And we would do the same thing. Yeah. We couldn't just have a, a, a dog man walk through that door right now and come and sit down and go and have, try and have a word with us because yeah. we'd be like, <laughs> yeah, call the RSPCA at the very least. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. So we we, we yeah. attack things that we that yeah. we don't, don't know anything about yeah. and we don't understand it. I think that's where a lot of um, yeah a lot a lot of it you know, sort of comes from. Um, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sort of more on, on one side of the fence than the other, certainly now than what I was maybe, you know, before we, you know, sat down and, um, mm. you know, spoke about it. Um, cause even from all the, you know, the research that I did, I didn't come across any sort of telepathic encounters or, you know, sightings or anything like that. So that was, um, yeah, that was quite a nice, uh, surprise yeah, for, even-, even for me and, and, you know, and it was a different, a different angle um as well which is um yeah kind of allowed me or, or sort of helped me to go down a certain route with yeah. or, or a certain side of the fence for you know what i believe so we're we're in agreement then dog man is a very good boy he's a very good boy just wants a, a belly rub that's all doesn't want to be shot <laughs> chuck him a treat scratch his ears and you're yeah. golden <laughs> yeah he's all right he just wants a belly rub that's why he's trying to climb through your window <laughs> yes yeah, yeah yeah, yeah. That's it. But yeah, maybe it is just that. Maybe it's just a curiosity sort of thing. You well, know, we're the, just as curious just about bit... them as they are about us. And like, exactly. like we said, um, I think we've you said it a few times on uh, on the podcast. You know that you know, if you look at, at them, that, that you know it's only about time that they're going to start looking back. Mm-hmm. And is that what's happening now? Is why is this why all these things are you know, kind of happening? Mm. Yeah, you know, I think it is. I think that's what happens with every, every single thing that you look into mm. that is. That is involved with high strangeness what comes under that yeah. umbrella um yeah it does start looking back at you because i mentioned it on um on our, our thursday call about mm. shadow people and in particular yes, the hat did. man yeah, yeah I, I, I wanted to ask you about that actually because we weren't talking about anything like that and mm. you're like oh yeah by the way i wanted, wanted to mention the hat man and, then and, we, and we spoke about, about it else. and stuff and i thought the hell was he brought that up for because yeah. then we started talking i think it was probably back about this or Talked about something else. And I was like, "What the hell did he bring that up for?" Yeah, I, was, I, I presume you're going to you're about to tell us. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll tell you a little yeah. something about it. Yeah. Um, I've always been fascinated <laughs> with the idea of shadow people and, and everything yeah. else, you know, because there's this idea of the shadow person standing in the corner of your bedroom whilst yeah. you're experiencing sleep paralysis. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like the hot the old hag syndrome sort yeah. of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, the other morning this week, right. Um, getting ready for work. It's still dark, um, but you can still see a little bit of light from like, some of the devices we've got in our bedroom yeah, yeah. and whatnot. And um, I always go and say goodbye to Sam. Mm. And uh, after I've got dressed and I've, I've turned around and looked over there. and Is, in the, there was, is this in the same spot where you've seen one before? No, this is right, crouching okay. by the side of the bed. <laughs> right, okay. And seemingly looking Sam in the face. Um, on her side of the bed? On or? her side of the bed. Now, Sam's got um, a little green light that's attached to her phone charger. Right. And it's it, it, it's a little LED, but it's yeah. bright. Yeah, yeah. And um, it was blocking it. It was blocking the light. So as I kind of was like, I thought to myself, what the hell was that? And as I started walking closer, because mm. I was going to say goodbye to Sam, that's why I turned yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. It melted away. <laughs> it melted away. Um, and the reason why I, I, I bring up the the hat man in particular mm. is that I've seen a strong prominence online of this phenomenon yeah, of saying, the hat yeah. man. You know, because maybe it said to you, it reminded me of the the, the, the creature or, or the entity in in one of the um, Conjuring Universe films. Yeah, the, yeah. where the guy I, I think they call him the Smiling Man. I don't think it's necessarily re- referring the hat, but he, he wears a hat. Wears a hat about halfway down his face, yeah, like a top hat style thing, and then all you see is the the Just grin, and his eyes coming through the 
upper part of the hat. Mm. So that you instantly made me think of that, but that's not the same no. thing. No, it's not the no, same thing. Right, no, okay. this is this is seemingly looks like um, just a I guy in a hat. A guy in a hat. <laughs> yeah, like really, um, I suppose you could, if you thought about the silhouette of a classical man in black sort of thing. Oh, right. Okay. Not like the the Will Smith, no, no, Tommy Lee Jones mean. thing. Yeah, but, I know what you mean, yeah. You know, the, the actual men in black. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Albert, Albert K. Bender yeah. men in black sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's very much along those sort of lines. And right. Yeah, yeah the, thing okay. that I, the thing that's kind of got me looking back into it um, is more so the various different um, compilations you get on YouTube. So there's yeah. quite a few of them, like Nuke's Top 5. Yeah. Um, I started get, I've the, started watching then. Yeah. yeah. Re, more so recently on those yeah. sort of compilations, there's been a lot of shadow people being seen. Yeah. Um, and documented. And mm. like, I'm talking to you. Yeah. Pack that in. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my phone's going off again. <laughs> Talk, yeah, listening mm. again. Yeah, listening, listening again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's this game that, that kids are playing now and it's called Red door yellow door any other color door um okay i i would um i would urge you not to play that game um right <laughs> well just because it's creepy or because there's something else to it there or? could be something else to it potentially what right. well basically what it is is it it's putting someone into a trance like state and getting them to walk through doors um so the right. idea is that they're trying to get to what for real or in the game? No, in the in this game. So right. they're being put into a trance, and then they're being told. So you've got a leader who's guiding the experience for this person that's gone into the trance, right? And the purpose of it is to find. <laughs> I haven't got the bell today, but what they call the back door area. <laughs> oh, but you have. Ding. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so it's almost like a back of house in between dimensions sort of thing. Right. Um, and if you're not supposed to see the hat, the hat man, basically. Right. Oh, so if you pick a, the door and he's in and it, he's in it, you've picked the wrong one. You need to get out sort of thing because right, okay. he's supposed to – sort of like um, Insidious where he takes your soul. I've still not seen it, you shockingly. I've still not seen – Insidious or any of the Conjuring universe. You should. <laughs> it's really bad. You should, man. Yeah, I will. But yeah, but, um, yeah I, I mean, I've yeah. completely digressed there, really. But yeah. Um, yeah, when you start looking at it, yeah, it starts looking back. So I've had quite a few yeah. um, shadow person experiences, um, especially in the last year. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've spoke about them on here, haven't we? Because mm. like, we've, we've both sort of seen or experienced various things of, of that sort of nature. Yeah. Since starting this. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And you start... Well, yeah. John Kill was wrong. He wasn't wrong, was he? No. No, he wasn't. When you start looking at them, they'll start looking back. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so be careful. Yeah, yeah be careful out there, guys. <laughs> you know, be careful with what you're looking into. Yeah. Uh, I mean, luckily enough, nothing's happened serious to us yet, but... No, no, nothing, yeah. I'm waiting nothing. for that, I'm waiting for that, that big <laughs> warning to come by. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't, but, uh, yeah, we'll... Uh, Either way, you'll be hearing from us if it does. So. Yeah, if we, yeah, exactly. You'll be hearing about it either way. So yeah, uh, yeah keep your ears open for uh, for that one. Yeah. So. So yeah. So there you go. Yeah. I guess that's um. That's, that's it. That's us. That's us done. That's so done. thank you yeah. very much for listening to our our yeah. latest episode on the Dogman. Yeah. Thank you. Um, if you've come to the same conclusion <laughs> as us, we'd love to hear about it. And if you haven't if come you haven't, to the same conclusion, yeah. we'd love to hear about Still it. Still want to know. Yeah. Yeah. We would like to hear what you've got to say. And if you found anything, obviously we will post those same pictures. The pictures and the links. For and what they're worth, anyway. Yeah, for what they're worth. Pictures. Yeah. But again, give us your opinion on those. What do you think they are? Do you think they're hoaxes? Do you think they're just something else? Something cast in a shadow? Or do you think it is... Uh, Dogman, mm. let us know. Yeah, let us know. So you can find us on all the socials. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Yep. Um, thank you again to our Patreons for your continued support. Yep, thank you. Um, guys, go over to patreon.com and uh, forward slash Cryptid Ramblers podcast. Yep. Um, and you'll be able to check out our tiers that we've got on that. You will. Also, the announcement of the merch store. Yes, absolutely. We'll, we'll be adding the links yeah, we'll do a proper social media launch um, at some point over the coming days. Yep. Um, and uh, a, a big thank you to Hellfire Creative for hosting us yet again. And yeah. uh, go and use that that 20% off discount code at Cryptid yeah. at the uh, checkouts, guys. Absolutely. So go, and do, go ahead. It's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me.
<laughs> the suspense. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just wait for it. What do you call dog man nun? Oh, God. What? A creature of habit. <laughs> oh I think you'd like it. I love it. Yeah, very good. Very good. <laughs>